reissue of forfeited shares. Shares which were forfeited, shares which were cancelled can be reissued. So Mohan's shares are forfeited. Mohan's membership is cancelled. Mohan is no longer a shareholder. But these same shares may be issued to Sohan X, Y or Z. Such reissue may be at par, may be at premium or may be at a discount. So basically the shares which were forfeited are being reissued. They may be reissued at par, they may be reissued at premium or they may be reissued at a discount. However, if the reissue is at a discount, if forfeited shares are being reissued at a discount, the maximum amount of discount, the maximum amount of discount is the amount which was forfeited. That means the amount which was received, the amount which was received at the time of forfeiture, the amount which was received from the previous shareholder. Now let us understand that the amount which is forfeited, the amount which lies in the shares forfeited account. What is the amount which is there in the shares forfeited account? It is the amount which has been received. This amount is a profit. It is a capital profit. Why is it a profit? Because shares have been cancelled. There is no share but amount has been received. And this amount is just a profit which is being retained in a shares forfeited account till the share is reissued. Shares forfeited account, like we said before, is added to the share capital and shown in the balance sheet. When shares are issued at a discount, the discount on issue, on reissue rather, the discount on reissue, this is a loss. This is a capital loss. That is why there is a restriction on the discount on reissue. The discount on reissue cannot exceed the amount which was forfeited. So if we have collected 3 rupees per share from the previous shareholder and the remaining 7 rupees were in arrears, when this share is being reissued, the discount cannot be more than 3. The discount cannot be more than 3. So the shares forfeited is the profit. The discount is the loss. If profit minus this loss, there is any net gain, such net gain is transferred to the capital reserve account. Is transferred to the capital reserve account. So when a share is forfeited, there is a balance in the shares forfeited account which represents a net a profit or a gain on forfeiture because it represents the amount which has been received on shares which are now cancelled. This amount is not refunded to the shareholder. When these shares are reissued, the amount is no longer retained in the shares forfeited account. So if a share which is forfeited is reissued, any balance in the shares forfeited account should be transferred to a capital reserve account. The net gain. Now when shares are reissued at a discount, there is a loss. There is a loss. The discount represents the loss. And such loss cannot exceed the balance in the shares forfeited account. Cannot exceed the profit which we made on forfeiture. The net gain, this shares forfeited account, the gain minus the loss on reissue, the net gain is transferred to the capital reserve account. These are in broad the provisions of the Companies Act with respect to reissue of 
forfeited shares. So reissue may be at par premium or discount. However, the amount of discount cannot exceed the amount forfeited. Profit after reissue is transferred to the capital reserve. So once shares forfeited are reissued, there should be no further balance in the shares forfeited account. Such balance should be transferred to capital reserve account. And the balance in the share forfeited account is added to the share capital. What is the balance in the shares forfeited account? The balance at any point in time in the shares forfeited account represents the amount received on the shares forfeited but not yet reissued. The amount received on shares forfeited and not yet reissued.